From the Duwamish and Suquamish peoples who first lived on its shores, to discoverers and surveyors like Captain Vancouver, the chilly waters of Elliott Bay have long enticed explorers and adventurers. I am Helen Divyak. And I'm Peter Nelson. And this, and this is, is your, your Mohai Minute. minute. Two stars fell out of the sky, bounced off a cloud and landed in your eye. Now two stars right here in my arms tonight. Henry Finch arrived in Seattle in 1896, determined to find his fortune, and over the next few years, he and his sons embarked on a number of adventures to Alaska and the Klondike on a quest to find gold. During one of these remarkable journeys, Finch descended into the icy Bering Sea to recover gold bullion lost in the wreck of the SS Islander. He is thought to be the first person to brave the depths of the Bering Sea and live to tell the tale. And it's amazing to think that Henry Finch wore a helmet much like this when he descended into the Bering Sea and Elliott Bay. This brass deep sea diving helmet is part of Mohai's permanent collection and weighs a whopping 35 pounds, which would have been only one quarter of the total amount of weight that deep sea divers wore around the turn of the century. In fact, deep sea divers used to wear about 100 to 200 pounds of gear when they descended into the waters. It would have included a helmet like this, a rubber suit, lead shoes, and chest plates. Finch went on to open a successful family-run diving company in Seattle near Coleman Dock. Nicknamed King of the Divers, Finch and his sons were responsible for salvaging a number of sunken ships throughout the Puget Sound, many of which were allegedly laden with gold bullion. Perhaps Finch's most significant legacy was his invention of the submarine telephone, which allowed submerged divers to talk to the ship's crew above water. This invention, along with his deep sea endeavors, made him a millionaire by the time he died at 875.